I'm here with our friend, Andy the Neanderthal. Andy, I'd like to get into a time machine and go back to a time when you were still alive, when you had flesh on your bones and a brain in your skull. And then, then I'd ask you this. In the question, are we alone, what does the word we mean to you? Me? We Neanderthals. We are better and stronger than you weak, stupid humans. Our brains are bigger and our gods are real. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. Forehead, forehead, forehead's bigger. This course is called, Are We Alone? Well, in January 2000, Scientific American had a leading story called, Once We Were Not Alone. What is that supposed to mean? Well, we take for granted that Homo sapiens is the only hominid on Earth. But at least four million years, many hominid species shared the planet. And what is a hominid species? Let's talk about that. Well, in this artist's picture, we have one group here. And they're looking suspiciously at another group right over there. And they say, oh, are you our friends? Are we going to fight each other? Are we just going to be allies and interbreed? What's going to go happen? We don't know, but be careful. And then there's another group here. And if you look carefully, there's another group here. So let's look at what do we know about these other hominid species and uh, what do we know about their role with each other? Uh, if... Uh, if you look at the phylogenetic tree of our closest ancestors, this is it. And remember that these are the apes. These are the great apes, also called hominids, nids. And what we're going to talk about today are all of the things that evolved here. And these are hominins. And notice that this is after this divergence point of about 7 million years with the lineage that led to chimpanzees. We're going to look at everything over here. So let's blow that up. And this is what it looks like. How do we get information about these? There are two sources usually. One are the bones and one are the genes. Now let's look at the bones, which are mostly skulls, the hardest part you have that survives in the dirt. And here is the hominin evolution. And today is on the right. Seven million years ago is on the left. These are different groups and different genuses, genera. Here are Homo sapiens. And here are our close relatives, Neanderthals, list, labeled here as Homo neanderthalensis. So labeled the same genus, but a different species. The time is 2 million, 1 million, and 0 with these three lines. And let's draw another line at 500,000, or half a million, right here. And I draw that because that's the time frame at which we diverged from Neander Neanderthals. 500,000 years ago. Now also remember that 2 million years is the time scale at which uh, the bonobos diverged from the uh, common chimps. All right, so let's put the skulls onto this plot and here's what they look like. They both have the same 7 million year time scale. But let's look more recently because uh, this, let's look at the last 2 million years. When you do that, we're going to blow that up when we blow that up, this is what it looks like. Notice that the two million is at the bottom left. And these are the different groups that were all around for the past two million years. Homo erectus. Notice Homo erectus moves to the left. On the top of the plot, you'll see the label Africa and then Eurasia. So the right-hand side of this plot means these are the guys who lived in Africa. The left are the ones who left Africa and went to Eurasia. And Erectus, Homo erectus, leaves Africa about 1.8 million years ago. And that then evolved, isolated, out of Africa into these antecessor, Peking man, Java man, and Florensiensis. So these are separate groups that lived outside of Africa, independent of the lineage that led from Erectus to Heidelbergensis and Neanderthals. So notice that about 500,000 years ago, Heidelbergensis moved out into Eurasia and became Neanderthals and Denisovans. This all happened about half a million years ago. 
So, and they went out of Africa, and this today, where, well, not today, but Neanderthal range was this. So notice that they're not in Africa, they are outside of Africa, in a broad range, broad part of the world, and these people, these Denisovans and these Neanderthals, lived in these regions before modern Homo sapiens came out of Africa. So we know when modern Homo sapiens came out of Africa because of the mitochondrial DNA, and you'll notice that in, in Africa you'll see the N group, and the N group splits and leaves and goes into the region where the Neanderthals were. So that's where the interbreeding occurred with the L3 that went into N. So back to our plot. And notice the green arrow here is when modern humans leave Africa. It's about 80,000 years ago. And when they did that, they met up with the Neanderthals who were already out of Africa, about, a, about half a million years. And then the modern humans interbreed with Neanderthals. That's what that blue coming together it means. And also with the Denisovans, about 50,000 years ago. So if you want to use a species, you want to say a species are anything that can interbreed with each other, then Neanderthals and Denisovans and modern humans were all the same species. And that's what they did. They interbred when they met up with each other. Maybe they killed each other too, but they also interbred. Now, these, so this interbreeding, the ability to interbreed, I've tried to just sketch it out here in the shade of blue, because the previous diagram, they, it looked as if these groups were separated from each other, but they're not really separated because they could interbreed. And so the blue kind of re reminds us that they could interbreed. Now let's look at the latest 600,000 years. So that's the white rectangle here. We're going to change the time scale. When you do that, you have this figure. This figure is based on mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA. And you'll notice that there are labels on it of L0 on the right, and L1, L2, L3. And here is L3 there, and the OOA means out of Africa. And so about 80,000 years, L3 people divided into East Africans who stayed in Africa, and then the non-Africans that left. But then you'll see the, the band, the yellow band, going all the way across back into Africa. So non-Africans went also back into Africa. And then you'll see the West Africans, L2, they also moved into Southern Africa. And so people were mixing even then, but the mixture was a lot more slow, slower than it is, uh, than it is today. So the point is that ancient interbreeding has occurred, and if you're from sub-Saharan Africa, you have about 2% of some unknown archaic African source. If you're a Eurasian or a, from Americas, then you have 2.5% Neanderthal. And if you're from Australia or New Guinea, then you have 2.5% Neanderthal and 5% Denisovan. These figures are all approximate. But I should say that I bet that that beige thing labeled African I bet within it are quite a few percentages of other groups that we have genes inside of us that we don't know about yet. For example, when we get the genome of, the, of Homo erectus, or Homo sapiens erectus, then there might be some large part of it, maybe 2, maybe 5, or even 10% of our genome might be from that group, at least for the, for the uh, few modern human beings who left Africa. Now, when you talk to paleoanthropologists about these ideas, they are almost inevitably splitters. That means on the right they use terms like Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, Homo denisovan, and Homo heidelbergensis, etc. And they're basing these splittings, these different species, on anatomical differences. But when I look at these things, I say, wait a minute, I bet since they can interbreed and we're going to use the ability to interbreed as the definition of species, then you have to talk about Homo sapiens sapiens, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. In other words, these groups are not the different species, but different subspecies that enable them to interbreed. And then there's a question mark about Homo sapiens erectus. Could they interbreed with us? Have they done that? We'll find out soon. So I guess the lesson is that Neanderthals didn't go extinct. We shouldn't think of them as going extinct. They just mixed with the invaders. Then the invaders were the people coming out of Africa about 80,000 years ago. Similarly, you shouldn't say that the Tasmanian, Tasmanians went extinct. They just mixed with the invaders. And the lesson is that sometimes populations diverge, sometimes they converge. And uh, it has been said that the fossil record indicates that there were many branches of the human lineage, but that we are the only survivors. But I disagree with that statement. I, I think since populations migrate and diverge in isolation, then they converge when the geographical isolation decreases. 
then we are really mixtures of different subspecies of the same species. So these arrows should be on top of each other. And what that means is that we are not alone because we have inside us multiple ancestors. Andy, I have thought of you as an extinct cousin. But now that we know about ancient interbreeding and one or two percent of my genes are your Neanderthal genes, well, how could we have been alone when we were having sex with each other? Part of you is inside me and inside a billion other home humans. humans. <laughs> so don't worry about your genetic legacy. It's alive and well inside a billion humans trying to survive with our hubris and tribalism.